What I want to do in this opening part, and then uh, Pastor Lorraine and I will we'll, we'll kind of talk about some of these other things, is do we really know what authority means? And when, when we were told that we were given God's authority, because there's a lot of scripture verses. Here, write, write a couple of these scripture verses down re really quick in your, in your book. And you may have them already, but write down Luke 9, 1 through 6. I'm going to go through this just real quick. Luke 9, 1 through 6. That's when he called the 12 and he gave them authority. Luke 10, 1 through 9. Luke 10, 1 through 9. This really helped me when I read this again. That was when he gave the authority to the 70. And they came back and they go, holy mackerel, the demons left. And Jesus said, hey. And then he started talking about the authority that he gave to them and he reminded them. And then Luke 10, 17 through 20. That, that's just three scripture verses. There's so many of them. But, but you need to know, we're talking about authority. But what are you going to do when you go home and you go back to your house and things are going on well the thing is you have power and authority to make a decree to do prayer because this is what this is about chapter three is accessing your authority in prayer so let me tell you you can write this down or or, or not but you just listen but you know what does it mean what does it mean to take authority if we're talking about authority well, what does it mean to take authority the power it, the uh, to take authority it's the power to uh it's the power to adjudicate. How many know what adjudicate means? I had to look it up. Adjudicate is this, to make a formal judgment or a decision about a problem. So what does it mean to take authority? We need to make a formal judgment or decision. When something's not going right and something's out of line, and our kids or our family or our spouse or ourselves, we're out of line, what do we need to do? We need to make a decision about this thing, and we need to take it into prayer. It means to settle an issue. It means to command it means to have the legal power to make and enforce, enforce a promise. And that's what we did tonight. We have a promise that we're free. And we made that declaration and we enforce that tonight by saying it with our mouth. Because out of our mouth comes either blessings or curses, life or death. So it has a lot to do with what you say. Here's a definition of authority. Authority, to operate under another's authority. <laughs> So you can say, I'm under authority. Whose authority are you under? Well, I'm under Jesus Christ's authority. He told me to go do this. He told me to go heal the sick. He told me if I drank any deadly poison, it wouldn't bother me. He told me to go take care of serpents and step on their head. And, you know, you can read all the different scripture verses that I just, I, I just taught you about. But the thing is, you've got to know what your authority is, who gave you that authority before you can actually begin to operate in that authority. Because how many have prayed for someone and that person died be honest but you thought it was you know you were hoping it was going to change the enemy will use all kinds of different situations we don't know the day we don't know the hour we just know our, our numbers are written in the in the book of life and it seems like the earlier somebody passes away it just doesn't seem like that was right I don't know the answer to all that but I do know the enemy has tried to use me praying for people, praying for the sick to not do it again because at certain times it didn't seem to work and it was very discouraging. Number one, because I was praying for them and the family. Fasted and prayed. I don't, I don't have the answer for that. But what it was trying to do, what was the enemy trying to do to me? It was trying to take away my authority and tell me that my authority doesn't work or my authority doesn't mean anything. And the thing is that it does. But things are going to happen in our life or situations are going to take place. However, God decides the thing or ordains the thing to go out. He's the only one that has the days numbered. We don't. But the thing is, that's what the enemy will use against us to take, to take away our power and our authority and then cause us just to shrink back. I'll let Pastor Lorraine pray for people now or I'll let, you know, someone else. I don't want to take a chance to go and do that. You know, why, um, why is your brother still... The brother-in-law is still in the bed and not totally restored. I don't know. But I continue to pray for him that he, you know, that God would restore him. He had a stroke and uh, it's his wife's brother and it's, it's uh, his, uh, Deli's brother-in-law. You know, there's just things like that. But what happens is when things go along and things don't change, then all of a sudden, you know, it's almost like we lose our authority. It's like, hey, what we're saying doesn't matter, but it does matter. Because no matter what's going on in a person's life, I don't care if they're totally unconscious, if they're, well, I don't even know where I'm going with this thing anyway. <laughs> if someone's laying in a, a I'm going to go pray for a, a little girl that's uh, not conscious right now that, that uh, went in a pool and drowned, almost drowned, still alive, 
over in uh, Good Sam. So she's at a hospital right now, and she keeps going in and out, and they don't know whether she's going to live or die. I'm going to go tomorrow and try to speak life over her body and pray that she would pray that she would wake up. You know how many times the enemy has told me, hey, you have no power or authority over that. Why, why are you going to go do that, you know, type of thing? And so as I read <laughs> chapter 3, I'm like, wait a minute. <laughs> We have power and authority to go and pray. Now, do I know what's going to happen? No, but do I know what I'm going to pray when I go in there? Yes, I do. I'm going to pray for her brain to function. I'm going to pray for her lungs to breathe, and I'm going to pray for her to rise up and get out of that bed and just pray for comfort over the family. But that's what our authority is. I'm going to go judicate. <laughs> I'm going to go do that over that. And, you know, always remember this. You don't want to be religious any place you go, okay? So I'm, I'm all fired up right now, but when I go in there, I'm going to be very calm. I'm going to be very mellow. And, you know, you got mom and dad there, and I don't even know if they're Christians or whatever. But, you know, bottom line is there is power in how we pray. So let me close that out, and we'll go into some of these lessons here, Pastor Lorraine, and, and uh, see where we're going to go here. So hopefully you guys enjoyed that. Hopefully you got something out of that. But, man, I want us to yeah. let me just pray for us real quick. Yes. All right. Father, in Jesus' name, I, I ask again. That, Lord, there would be an impartation of power and authority that you've already given us through the power of the Holy Spirit. Lord, I, I pray and I ask that there would be an impartation in each and every one of our lives. Lord, that we would rise to another level tonight because of visiting about the power and the authority that was given to us un with Jesus. When he left, anyway, he says, it's better for me to go. I'm going to send the helper. Go and be endued with power. And so, Lord, I pray that every single one of us, let's just raise our hands together. Lord, endue us with fresh, new power tonight. Lord, as we study, as we share, uh, as we go through the teaching, as we discuss at the tables, I pray there will be fresh power and anointing to have authority to speak things into the air, to speak things into being, to lay hands on the sick, and that we will see them recover. Lord, we pray and we ask that in Jesus' name. Everybody said Amen. Okay, Pastor Lorraine. Okay. Well, I may not even go to anything we talked about earlier. <laughs> so, <That's okay. laughs> so Lord's given me a couple of other things. Is I, you know, really, you cannot talk about authority without talking about prayer. Amen. They just are like hand in hand, right? You also can't talk about authority without remembering that we're joint heirs with Christ. Why do we have authority? Because we happen to be of the household, the royal household of Almighty God. He is our Father, Jesus is our brother. We have the Holy Spirit living inside of us. We have authority to live a victorious life. So the Lord gave me this example When, if I were to invite all my children and grandchildren to my house for a roast beef dinner with all the trimmings and good dessert, and I said, y'all come over and let's eat. When they walked in the door, they would say, is it ready, mom? I'm ready to eat, smells good, I'm so hungry, I can't wait to sit down to this dinner. They would not come in my house and go, Oh, Mama, please. Oh, Mama, please. Can we have some of your, your food that you fixed for us today? They would not beg me for food. Why would they not do that? Because they know who they are in my house. And they know they have been promised something. And they know that they have been invited there for a purpose, right? It's the same thing with us and the Lord. If you know Jesus and you have been born again, you have been grafted in and you are now part of that royal family and you have that authority. My children would have that authority by my invitation, my promise and their relationship with me to come into my house and expect what they'd been told that they could expect. And we can expect what we've been told, we can expect by the word of God. That's the authority that we walk in. So when we, there's all, every one of these days, I, I thought Pastor Sherry did an excellent job 
with, with these five days. Uh, and I, I loved every one of them. Um, I thought it was interesting because, see, I th after all these years, I was telling Pastor Sam, binding and loosing, that's in my daily prayer. I'm binding things and I'm loosing things and I'm, and I'm, I'm like, you know, thought I had it down. And I was rereading it again this afternoon. And I was looking at her def the definition that she gave here. She said, bind needs, means to be in bonds, to knit, tie, wind. Loose means to loosen, break up, destroy, dissolve, melt, and put off. This, I have to bring everything down to, you know, I taught third grade for a long time, so I bring everything down to third grade level. So what it's talking about is we tie up the enemy and his schemes, right? So we tie him up and we untie ourselves or the person that we're praying for. Then we're, they're loosed. So all this time I was praying, I loose blessings, I loose the power of God in their lives, I loose, but actually you're loosing the person to go and be in the, the blessings of the Lord because the blessings of the Lord are already theirs. They're already there. I don't have to set them free. They're not bound up. The blessings of God are not bound up. So I found that really interesting. I was glad that she put those definitions in there. But, um, you know, we know from Matthew 10, 1, that Jesus gave us authority over demons and disease. In Matthew 28, 18, it says that Jesus has all authority. But we also know from John 14, 12, that we'll do even greater works than Jesus, so we have the authority. And there are many scriptures that talk about us having authority in Christ. It's just that the enemy wants to kind of keep us with our head down, thinking, you know, well, when's the next shoe going to drop? What ne what's going to come against me next? No. My, my, my husband, with our little two-year-old grandson, he'll ask him, he'll say, Jameson, who's the boss? And he'll say, Papa. Well, that's what we got to say every day. Who's the boss? God, and he's in me, so I'm in charge, and I have authority. Amen. So, that's something to add to that, I Pastor do. Sam. I'm still on authority. Okay. All right. <clears throat> so, let me... Let me do what the Greek and the Strong's has said about uh, uh, authority. So all the scripture verses that have, he has given us authority, or when Jesus said, I gave the disciples authority, so go and do this and go and do that. Um, and I'll, I'm going to read one of the scripture verses here, but let me read to you. Uh, I, I can't pronounce what the word is, but anyway, it's in the Greek, and it's number 1849, but check this out. This is what, the, this is what it says authority means, superhuman I thought, wow, to magistrate, it's a token of control. You know, control can be good and or bad. I mean, what does the enemy try to do? He tries to control our life. Well, we're going to take it back. So we need to control it the other way in, in godly influence. It means to influence. It means to liberate. Authority is power. Authority is the right. Authority is strength. And authority is to have full privilege. I'm like, whoa, that is powerful. Now, am I going to remember all that tomorrow morning? Probably not, but I am going to remember this. Superhuman being able to take control and to magistrate. I got that down in my head right now. So that's just a powerful thing. Let me tell you what authority that God gave us to do. Of course, you, you guys know the Matthew 28, 18, 19, and 20. We call it the Great Commission, but it, it tells you to more than just go you therefore and make disciples. It tells you to do things, heal the sick, raise the dead, cast out demons. And then the same thing in Mark, it's the same type. So you need to read Matthew 28. So read that, Matthew 28, 18, 19, and 20. That's what's called the Great Commission if you're Southern Baptist. So, and, and maybe other things call it that also. But, all, but the other thing is in Mark 16, and it's verses um, 18, uh, 16, 17, and 18. It's the same thing that's being written again in the Gospel of Mark, but it adds more to it. 
So in Matthew uh, 28, he told us to go, you therefore make disciples and stuff. And then this is what he told. And I know you guys all know this. But anyway, I'm going to read from Mark 16, and I'm going to start with verse 15. So he appeared to them. He uh, gave them authority. And then he said to them, go into all the world, preach the gospel to all creation. He who has believed and has been baptized, they'll be saved. But he who has disbelieved shall be condemned. These signs will follow you who have believed. In my name, you will cast out demons. You will speak with new tongues. You will pick up serpents. And if you drink any deadly poison, it will not hurt you. You will lay hands on the sick and they will recover. So that's the authority that God gave to the disciples telling them, hey, go do this when he left. And then he sent the Holy Spirit. Hey, go wait and tarry. And that's John 14, 15, and 16. You can read about the Holy Spirit and what the Holy Spirit's role is uh, in our life. So hopefully you've gleaned something about authority here tonight uh, from us. And uh, as you guys go and, and talk in your, because there's different things, day one, two, three, four, and five, how to bind and loose, how to do prayer. You know, always remember this. You know, let me, do, let me give you one more scripture verse. Because sometimes people say, you know, about this, this is not name it and claim it, okay? Is everybody, nice. don't, don't take this thing too extreme. That was back in the day when they would, you know, I declare a Cadillac, I declare a million dollars in my bank account. And, and it sounds funny, but I mean, people would, that, people would say that. And then that's what got declarations a bad name. It's like, well, I don't do that. You're, you're part of the name it and claim it group. You know, no, you, you want to proclaim what the principles and what the promises are that God has. So if God's got a principle and a promise, he does say that he gives us the ability to create wealth. It's okay to say that. Lord, give me the ability more. So what you're doing is you're getting vision and direction. You're not saying, Lord, put a million dollars in, you know. You know what I'm saying? That just, that's goofy. But it Because you might be limiting yourself. He may want to give you a billion. Well, there we go. I was thinking, I was thinking five, but okay, billion. There we go. <laughs> Okay, so write down this scripture verse right here. This, this is in regards to that the Lord is looking for someone to do something. And this is in Ezekiel. This is Ezekiel 22, 30 through 31. And you probably all heard this sermon or whatever. You heard the scripture verse. But here's the gist of it. Ezekiel 22, 30 through 31. The Lord says, I, I'm looking to and fro throughout the land um, to find someone who would pray. And the thing was, or someone that would stand in the gap. So that's kind of a Christian, that's a you know charismatic kind of term. I'm standing in the gap. I don't mean that a bad way because the Bible says to stand in the gap, to stay on the wall. I mean, we could go into all kinds of different things. But it says, the Lord is looking to and fro for someone to stand in the gap so that he could heal the land. But the sad part of that story was, but he found no one. So there's a principle there that he's looking for someone who will stand in the gap over something that needs to take place. Something needs to change. Something needs to shift. Why are the ladies in Washington, D.C.? There's no way something's going to shift in that crazy town with all the crazy people that are there and everybody yelling and screaming and all the blank that's going on over there. You know, but the thing is, hey, God's looking for someone that would stand in the gap. Why? So that he could heal the land. So anytime we're praying over things or we're going after things or we're doing things, what are you doing? I'm doing what God says. He looked for someone to stand in the gap so that he would heal the land. So take that devil. Take it. In Jesus' name. All right. Get in your groups and uh, kind of go around the table and discuss and uh, let's move in the authority that's been given to us.